third mean value theorem ma, that is Cauchy mean value theorem. So what Cauchy mean value theorem says? Till now we discussed Rolle's theorem and Lagrange's theorem. Ma. They were defined on one function. But this is the only mean value theorem which defined on two functions like f comma g are two functions. If f comma g are two functions, function means uh, a comma b to r, f maps a comma b to r, g maps a comma b to r, closed rate interval, that type of functions, then both are continuous. f comma g are continuous on closed interval a comma b f comma g are derivable on open interval a comma b and this should be satisfied g dash of x not equal to 0 for all x belongs to open interval a comma b if it satisfies these three conditions then there exists c in open interval a comma b such that f dash of c by g dash of c equal to f of b minus f of a by g of b minus g of a. Just like if you take Lagrange's mean value theorem division for two functions, you will get this one. What is in Lagrange's mean value theorem f dash of c f of b minus f of a by b minus a. g dash of c will be g of b minus g of a by b minus a, b minus a, b minus a get cancelled, we get this one now. So, Cauchy mean value theorem is applied on two functions, namely f and g. So, one application we will discuss here, one example. So, apply Cauchy mean value theorem for the two functions like this, f of x equal to e power x, g of x equal to e power minus x in closed interval 3 comma 7. So apply Cauchy mean value theorem can be applied on these two functions or not. So clearly here what you can understand e power x exponential function is always continuous and derivable I said. So because e power x in this interval has finite values. That's why clearly f comma g, f comma g are continuous in given interval and closed interval f comma g r f comma g r derivable derivable in open interval 3 comma 7 and one more thing third condition third condition g dash of x equal to g of x is e power minus x mark g dash of x is minus e power minus x will not be equal to 0 for all x belongs to open interval 3 comma 7 it should not be equal to 0 then what happens f comma g satisfies all the three conditions of Cauchy mean value theorem so then what happens there exists there exists c in open interval 3 comma 7 such that f dash of c by g dash of c equal to f of b minus f of a f of 7 minus f of 3 by g of 7 minus g of 3. You all know that differentiation of e power x is e power x. Differentiation of e power x is e power x. So then differentiation of e power c is e power c. Differentiation of e power minus x is minus e power minus x. That means e power minus c. Here also f of 7 means e power x. You need to write in the place of x7. Then what you will get? e power 7 minus e power 3. Similarly in g of x also. e power minus 7 minus e power minus 3. You all know that e power minus x can be written as 1 by e power x. e power minus c can be written as e power minus c can be written as minus 1 by e power c. Like that here also e power 7 minus minus e power 3 by 1 by e power 7 minus 1 by e power 3. Now, this denominator denominator comes to numerator e power c into e power c, e power 2c. Like that here also, e power 7 minus e power 3 by, if you take e power 7 into e power 3 as LCM, what you will get ma? e power 3 minus e power 7. 
e power 3 minus e power 7. Here if you take minus common ma, what you will get? Here you will get plus, here you will get minus. That means these two terms are equal. Both the terms get cancelled. Then what we are having? Minus e power 2c equal to, bases are equal, we can add exponents. 7 and 3 we can add. 7 plus 3, 10. So bases are equal, exponents will be equal. So that means 2c equal to 10. What is c ma? c equal to 10 by 2, 5. What we need to prove? This c should be lies between in the given interval. c value 5. 5 lies between 3 and 7. S or no? S. 5 lies between 3 comma 7. So, Cauchy mean value theorem is applied on these two functions and verified. And we find Cauchy c also. Sometimes you may get question like this also. Find c of Cauchy mean value theorem. To find c of Cauchy mean value theorem, you need to follow these steps. Ma. First, you need to check these three conditions. If the functions satisfies these three conditions, then you can apply Cauchy mean value theorem like this. Find out c value. That should be lies between E and B. Are you clear, ma? Any doubts you can express. Okay, ma? Next problem. We need to verify Cauchy mean value theorem for the two functions f of x equal to root x and g of x equal to 1 by root x. Here, the interval is a comma b. As I said earlier, if a functions are defined on the interval a comma b, they should be assumed as continuous and derivable. Otherwise, we cannot do any other applications. That's why here interval is a comma b and also root x and 1 by root x values are given. Here, in this interval, we don't have 0 also. That is mentioned clearly. If you get infinity anywhere, that function is not continuous. Here, there is no case of getting infinity. That's why clearly what we can observe, clearly, f comma gr f comma gr continuous on closed interval a comma b and also f comma gr derivable derivable in open interval a comma b and also g dash of x g dash of x means differentiation of 1 by root x differentiation of root x 1 by 2 root x ma differentiation of 1 by root x minus 1 by 2x root x should be not equal to 0 in open interval a comma b because a b values are greater than 0 that's why you won't get 0 here if you have 0 there is a case of getting infinity there is no case of getting 0 in g dash of x definitely we can say g dash of x is not equal to 0 for all x belongs to a comma b that's why f comma g satisfies all the three conditions of Cauchy mean value theorem then what happens there exists c in open interval a comma b such that such that f dash of c by g dash of c equal to f of b minus f of a by g of b minus g of a so this condition should be satisfied how this condition should be satisfied like c belongs to open interval a comma b that means if you take this condition and find out c value then that c value should be lies between a and b now i am going to check whether c lies between a and b or not if this inequality satisfies now f dash of c means i said differentiation of root x is differentiation of root x is 1 by 2 root x differentiation of root c is 1 by 2 root c similarly differentiation of 1 by root x minus 1 by 2x root x like that here differentiation of 1 by root c that means you need to write in the place of x c ma then what you will get minus 1 by 2c root c equal to f of b f of what is f of x root x f of b means root b minus f of a root a g of b in g of x write in the place of x b ma what you will get 1 by root b minus 1 by root a if you write in the place of x a you will get 1 by root a now 2 2 get cancelled ma root c root c also get cancelled you will get say c to numerator denominator denominator generally comes to numerator this c will come to numerator like this equal to root b minus root a by here you can take root a b lcm 
If you take root A B L C R, what happens? You need to write root A here, root B here. That means here you will get root A minus root B. Again, if you take minus common here, if you take minus common, this minus root A becomes plus root A, plus root B becomes minus root B. Why we need to take like that? If you take minus common, these two terms will be equal. Here you are having plus root A, plus root A. Minus root B, minus root B. That means we can cancel these two. Then what is the value you are going to get for C? Minus C equal to minus root AB. Minus minus cancel. C is root AB. If you want you can check by taking any two values for AB. Definitely root AB lies between A and B. For example, if you take 4 and 4. So if you take A value 2, B value 3. A value 2, B value 3 will be easy. Root AB, root 2 into 3, root 6. Root 6 means uh, root 4 is 2, root 9 is 3. Root 6 lies between 2 and 3 definitely. You know, root 4 is 2, root 9 is 3. Root 6 lies between root 4 and root 9. What it means? This value should be lies between 2 and 3. What we can conclude? This value always lies between A comma B. That's what we need to do. Cauchy mean value theorem. So root AB lies between A comma B. Therefore, Cauchy mean value theorem is verified. Cauchy mean value theorem is verified. Okay, ma? Any doubts you can express. But here we need to take two functions. That's what you need to remember. Two functions you need to check continuity and differential property. Next one, huh? we need to check. Cauchy mean value theorem for the two functions f of x equal to sin x, g of x equal to cos x. For that, here clearly f of x is sin, g of x is cos. You all know that cos and sin values are lies between minus 1 and plus 1. So, in cos and sin, never you will get infinity case. There is no case of getting infinity in sin and cos. That's why I said in the starting class while discussing properties of continuous and uh, differentiable functions, sin and cos are always continuous and derivable. That means clearly here f comma g r, f comma g r, continuous, continuous on closed interval 0 comma pi by 2 and f comma g r, derivable derivable in open interval 0 comma pi by 2 and third condition you all know g dash of x should be not equal to 0 what is g dash of x g of x is cos x g dash of x differentiation of cos x differentiation of cos x is minus sin x differentiation of cos x minus sin x this should be not equal to 0 for all x belongs to open interval 0 comma pi by 2 Open interval means I said ma, you should not take 0 and pi by 2, in between 0 and pi by 2. We all know that sin 0 is 0, right? But here open interval means excluding 0 and pi by 2. If you exclude 0 pi by 2, you won't get 0 anywhere for sin function. That's why third condition also satisfied. Here, three conditions of Cauchy mean value theorem are satisfied by f comma g. Then what happens? There exists C in open interval. 0 comma pi by 2 such that such that f dash of c by f dash of c by g dash of c equal to f of b f of pi by 2 minus f of 0 this is b this is a by g of pi by 2 minus g of 0 so f dash of c means nothing ma you need to differentiate sin x you all know that differentiation of sin x is cos x Differentiation of cos x is minus sin x. Differentiation of sin x is cos x. That means differentiation of sin c is cos c. By differentiation of cos c is minus sin c. Equal to, you all know these values also, ma. Sin 0 is 0. Sin 90 is 1. Sin 0, 0. Sin pi by 2, 1. Similarly, opposite values you will get for cos. Cos 90, 0 cos 0 1 so f of pi by 2 means sin pi by 2 sin pi by 2 is 1 sin pi by 2 is 1 sin 91 sin 0 0 similarly opposite values for cos 
cos 90 cos 90 0 cos 0 1 now cos by sin you all know ma cos by sin is cot in trigonometry cos theta by sin theta equal to cot theta cos c by sin c what you will get minus cot c equal to 1 minus 0 1 0 minus 1 minus 1 you will get minus 1 so minus minus 1 get cancel cot c equal to 1 so cot c equal to 1 means in cot theta in which angle at which angle you will get 1 we all know that cot 45 degrees is 1 cot 45 degrees is 1 what i am saying cot pi by 4 is 1 in radians pi by 4 means 180 by 4 45 degrees that means if you write in the place of c pi by 4 45 degrees then only you will get 1 that means what is c value ma? c value is pi by 4 pi by 4 means 45 degrees that we can calculate by writing in the place of pi 180 pi is 180 degrees 180 by 4 45 but our interval is 0 comma pi by 2 pi by 2 means 180 by 2 90 0 to 90 degrees our interval but we need to get c value in between 0 and 90 what I said, C value is pi by 4, 45 degrees. 45 degrees absolutely lies between 0 and 90. That's why pi by 4 lies between 0, pi by 2. That's what we need to prove. If you prove C lies between given interval, then Cauchy mean value theorem is verified. Cauchy mean value theorem is verified. Clear ma? We need to apply Cauchy mean value theorem especially on two functions. Okay.